Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. One of the things I get asked a lot is about tracking employee training and certifications. So I've decided to put together a little video series on doing just that. We're going to start from scratch and we're going to build a database so you can track employee training. What courses they're supposed to take, what courses they have taken and when how good those courses or training certifications are good for. So if they have to renew every year, you'll get a notification. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to go over our table design and then build it from there. Now, this will be a developer level video, meaning there's going to be some VBA involved. Now, I'm going to try to stick to building as much of the database as I can at first without VBA programming. All right, so we'll get the table layout. We'll get the tables built. We'll get the forms built. But some of the stuff will require some VBA, and I'll try to add that toward the end. But I might sneak in some little embellishments here and there. So if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's my intro to VBA. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Now, unlike a lot of my other videos, I have not pre-built this database. Sometimes I run through ahead of time and I build everything up front. I haven't done that. We're going to be building it together. All I've done so far is put together the table layout that I think I'm going to need. So there may be some other videos that I point you to when we come across certain topics or functions that I think you might need to, to use, and I'll address that when we get to it. I figure a lot of the time you guys learning the best way to build a database sometimes involves seeing me start from scratch and build a database because I guarantee you I'm going to make a couple of mistakes or things that I want to change after the fact. And that happens when you're developing a database or sometimes you build it a certain way and you get, you know, you get feedback from your client and they're like, well, no, we don't like it like this. We wanted to do this instead. So that might happen too. I don't know. We'll be doing this together. So strap in. I don't know up front how many parts this is going to be probably at least three or four parts. So we'll, we're going to do this together. Are you ready? All right. So those of you who've taken any of my longer courses or seminars or even some of the previous tech help, series that I built. You know, the first thing that I always do is I sit down and I put together my list of tables and the fields that those tables should have. I think this is crucial in understanding what your database is going to do, especially if it's a little more complex like this one. So let's go over all of these tables and fields and what each one of these things is going to hold. All right. Up first is the department. Every organization has different departments. If you're of a certain size, of course, if you're if you're a big enough size where you got to track employee training, usually you have multiple departments, HR, sales, accounting, technical support and so on. Now, these departments are important for knowing what departments employees are in and also what departments the courses fall under. So, for example, HR would have their own list of these are the HR courses. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, inside each department, you've got various roles, and these could be simply just the different levels of that department. Like you got HR level one, HR level two, right? Sales level one, sales level two. HR level one employees, for example, they might be able to do job interviews, right? Or exit interviews. But HR level two actually has the power to hire and fire based on the recommendations from HR level one. Again, depending on the size of your organization, right? Your IT guys, right? IT level one might be the guy that you call when it's like, oh, my computer won't start. All right. And he comes and he, you know, he, he plugs in the power strip because you kicked it out of the wall. I've had that happen when I used to do tech support. Okay. IT level two is the guy that, you know, okay, now we really got to troubleshoot and so on. Right. Or you could set up individual roles between your different departments, whatever you want to do. For me, that's good enough for me. So that's what I'm going to do. And of course, between department and role, you can see we have a one to many relationship here, right? Each department can have multiple roles assigned to it. I'm not going to draw the little lines. You get it. I made the colors the same. That's good enough, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up is the important one, the course table. Now for me, I'm just going to call it course D. These could also be certifications, right? If you're not actually giving training, but you have to track their certifications, maybe they have to go you know, to some outside organization to get certified. That's, that's fine too. You can use this for both. All right. You can also put into, into this table something like a, uh, a requirement for hiring, like a bachelor's degree and whatever. All right, that's completely up to you. Again, that's just going to be called a course. It's kind of like what I do on my website. I call everything a course and it's listed on your My Courses page. Even if it's a seminar or a template or a PDF handbook that you purchased, 
they're all it's all included in the courses list. So this could be courses, certifications, outside education, all that stuff. It falls under the category of courses. And stuff like that is really just a training issue for your users. OK. Now, courses fall into different departments. We'll, we'll talk about how they relate to roles in just a minute. And these will be things like this, right? HR 101, Introduction to Company Policies, HR 102, Workplace Etiquette and Expectations, and so on, right? Uh, basic IT Level 101, Logging into Your Account, right? Password Management. And these are all things that, you know, people in these departments have to know. And some things all users might have to know. We'll get to that in just a minute. All right, the Course ID, obviously, is the primary key. Again, we have a one-to-many relationship. Courses fall under departments. We got a course code, IT 101. You've saved any of you have gone to college or even high school, sometimes they do this, right? The course name, description. Now, resource URL is something that I'm going to just leave open. You can put a link to, I'm assuming, on your company website or your intranet or whatever you've got set up, a link to wherever the course material is or more information about it that the user can view, whatever. Expiration number of years. All right, most certifications that I've come across are only valid for a certain number of years. One year, three years, five years, whatever you got to recertify. So we'll make a list of who's got, you know, the requirement to recertify coming up. That'll be part of this database, right? Notes, of course, you'll find notes in most tables. And then, of course, is active because sometimes courses become defunct, right? This course is no longer, you know, HR 102 has been replaced by HR 122. But you don't want to delete it because you still want to know which of your employees have taken this course. We don't delete stuff, right? I got a whole video called Don't Delete Data. You just mark it not active. All right. I guess you could do the same thing with every table, but eh, courses are something that usually become uh, come in and out more often than departments and roles would. Okay. Next up, we have the junction table that will relate roles to courses. Okay. What role are you in? Your HR level one, HR level two, IT level one, okay? And what courses are required for you to have that position? For example, HR level one, they got to have HR 101, HR 102, HR 103, and IT 101. Maybe everybody's got to have that IT 101, right? Everybody in the, in the, in the building got to know how to log on to your computer. Well, maybe in, unless you're in the warehouse and you don't have a computer. I don't know. This is up to you to decide, right? So IT level one has to have basic HR 101, the IT classes, right? IT level two might have to have all this stuff plus IT 201, 202. This is where you decide who has, who needs what courses for that job. That's the role requirement table. And I put a sort order on there because, you know, you might want to force them to have to take them in a particular order. You got to have IT 101 before you can have IT 102. It's kind of like what I tell my students, right? You got to take access beginner one, beginner two, beginner three, all the beginner classes before you get into the expert series and so on. Um, do you have to? No, but you should. <laughs> okay. Here's another table I threw in called course prerequisites. You might have courses that, you know, rely on other courses, kind of like mine do, right? Before you take HR 102, you have to take HR 101 and so on. Generally, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, right? Each course has a single other prerequisite, but you never know. You might have something like Leadership 101, which is like your executive track, right? In order to take that, you have to have had a bunch of other courses before you can even take this one. So that's why I made this a many to many. All right. All right. Got to have HR, CS is customer service, sales, IT. Got to understand the business before you can be put in a leadership role. So, and again, it's up to you, but. All right. Next up, we have our employee table. All right, now the employee table is going to relate to some of these other things in a minute. We'll talk about that, but employees is exactly what it sounds like, right? Employee ID. Supervisor ID is just a link back to another employee. I'm going to make this just one field. Yes, I know in some organizations you got multiple supervisors, especially if you work at Inatech, right? Not only do you get eight different bosses and endless TPS reports, but it's just, it's, it's crazy. And don't, don't ever steal the stapler. But I think for most companies, most well-run companies, you got one person to answer to. <laughs> okay. Uh, name, address, all those basic fields. I'm not going to get into I got millions of other videos on multiple addresses and phone numbers and all that stuff. We're just going to keep it simple for this one. Hire date and terminate date. Yes, there could be other things in there, but those are the two basics. Your job title, because even though you're HR 102, you might have a, a funky job title. So we'll just make that text. 
notes, and then again, of course, is active, because even after you terminate someone, you don't want to delete their record. All right, so that's basic employee information. Okay, next up, we have a junction table between employee and role, because one employee might have multiple roles, right? They might be in HR and in sales. Okay, so you've got the cross-reference ID, that's your primary key, employee ID links to the employee table, their role ID links to what role they have, okay, and, and by extension, you can find out what department that is. You've got a start date and an end date. Notes, the qualified date, what date did they finish their training? What date did they become qualified for that role? And then I added is primary because sometimes people have a primary role, like, you know, you are the HR manager, but especially in smaller companies, you might jump in and get on the phones and help with sales. All right, so you might be uh, trained in multiple roles. Okay, so that's the junction table for that. And likewise, we now have an employee X course ID junction table for what courses this employee has taken. Okay, we've got an employee ID, the course ID, then you've got the enrollment date, the deadline date, like how long do they have to take this course, right? You might have like one month from the time you're hired to finish this course or whatever. That's again, completely up to you. This is mostly for reporting purposes. This is so you could generate a report saying, okay, which employees have not finished their training by their deadline dates, that kind of thing, right? Completed date, expiration date, when does this course expire? And that'll be a calculated field because you got the completed date and then you've got the number of years that it's good for, right? And yeah, I could have made this number of months or number of days, but very seldom do I come across any kind of training or certification that's not in years, right? Or at least if it's six months, you could put in 0.5, make it a double, right? And then a status ID, that's just another little helper table telling you where this person is in, in, the, you know, in the progress of taking this course. It's in progress, they finished it, they failed it. Okay, that's up to you, all right? So there you go. There's our basic database schema. There might be some modifications along the way, but this is where you wanna start. You wanna go from you know, a little Excel spreadsheet, that's how I build my stuff. You could do it on paper, you could do it on index cards. I talk about this in a lot more detail in my Access Beginner One class. Um, there will be some tweaks along the way. There always are, okay? But this gives us a place to start with. We have a, a roadmap. We know where we're going with this database. So now in part two, we'll start actually putting these tables together. So that's gonna do it for part one. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. And if not, I hope it was a good little review on how to you know, build your tables and stuff, get your tables all set up. Your database schema. Good keyword there, right? Schema. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. A special thank you and shout out to our Diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, 
access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members, Get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.